right. Good morning, interwebs. Um, if the if there are those of you catching us live, then good morning. If you're uh, watching in syndication or listening to the podcast, then good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever time of day you guys happen to be listening to this. And welcome to another episode of How I Met Your Mortgage. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Adam Smith, with Just the Tips Coaching, and with me is uh, one of our coaches and marketing director, Jen Weibower. Good morning, Jen. Good morning. I see you got a haircut. Um, everybody's uh, going back to bangs for the pandemic. Yep, I haven't had bangs since 2009. It's fine. Since 2009. All right. So um, one good turn. And our <laughs> guest this week is actually a uh, repeat guest, although it doesn't seem like it's been however long it's been since you've been on the show. Aaron, welcome, Aaron Sell. Good morning, Aaron. Thanks for having me back. I know I was when Jen and I were talking about it, I was like, oh my gosh, how long ago was it that I was on? And it honestly feels like it's been like a few years based on 2020. Right. <laughs> and and yet it somehow feels like it was eight weeks ago. I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that somehow the pandemic has destroyed the time space continuum. The days yes, take I'm, forever. I'm, the I weeks, agree. yeah, the weeks take forever. The months take forever and yet somehow it's almost september <laughs> Is it? i don't know how that's actually happened. i i was saying to a friend of mine last night can we just like fast forward the rest of this movie and move into 2021 and just like then maybe delete the tape <laughs> well like let's just record over it oh perfect right? yeah we can yeah. rewrite it yeah it's, yeah it's like when people recorded star wars over their wedding tape it was, oops, yeah, oops! but it, it happens, and I'm happy to do that with 2020. I think everybody is. Yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. true. So tell us what you've been up to in eight months' time, Erin. Um, well, I mean, like everybody else, I've spent a whole lot of time at home. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. That's what we're supposed to do. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I've done a few um, virtual conferences. In fact, I have another virtual conference coming up on Friday. Um, and I, we can talk about that a little bit. It's kind of in the blockchain realm, um, but it's something a little different than um, in the social sphere. Um, other than that, I've been, you know, just, just working. I've actually been focusing on a lot more of podcasting type things. Um, definitely the blockchain and social different social platforms that are alternatives to our, you know, the big, the big social media platforms. Sure. Um, and we were talking before we went live, I'm actually planning a um, alternative social, uh, alternative digital marketing conference that basically will give you options uh, for the the big social media platforms, but also like um, helping you with privacy and censorship on search and browsers and and all that good stuff. Oh, I like this. So Very cool. yeah, can you can you uh, well one certainly give us some details about the event when and where and well, so those are us... not those are not a hundred percent decided yet. Um, we're still in the early stages of planning, but as of right now, I'm thinking it's going to be. Uh, October 22nd and 23rd okay. and most likely it's looking like it will be kind of a networking party and intro on the first day and it'll probably be like I don't know four to six hours that day and then the next day will be the like deeper dive into everything and that will be a full day conference with an after party networking. All right well when you say a deeper dive into everything how much of everything can you give us? Um, so the plan is to try and recruit uh, speakers from each of the the main blockchain alternative social media platforms. So some of those being like Jen mentioned before, she's only on a couple of them or maybe just one. And that is Rebuzz. Um, and that's Rebuzz.io. If you want to go check that out, I actually have a, a I guess affiliate link for that at sociallypowered.com forward slash rebuzz. And you get something if you use that link. I think it's like they give you so many rebuzz. So basically, um, all the blockchain, crypto, 
social media alternative platforms, you are rewarded for posting. So for example, Instagram isn't gonna pay you for posting on Instagram. In fact, they want you to pay them, right? <laughs> if but, given the option, you bet. Right? Yeah. So these platforms allow you to actually get paid for posting. So the better your content is, the more people like, comment, and share on your posts, then you get rewarded for that in cryptocurrency. So some of those are, um, as I mentioned, Rebuzz. There's also Karma. There's SoMe. Um, I believe, in fact, I actually just had, it's SoMe.social. Um, so that's one. There's Minds.com. Uh, Voice just came out. In fact, I still don't have access to Voice. They, they gave me something or they sent me something the other day. So I can now at least go, I can look on there, but I still can't. I don't, I don't have an account and I can't post. Um, so that's, that's just a few of them. And what I would like to do is have, you know, people come from those companies to talk about what they're doing, how they're changing the game in social media. And, you know, it's like I said, I mean, getting paid to post, it's also, you're not going to be censored. It's private. Um, there's so many things that you can do with these blockchain platforms that you you don't have that option with on you know the mainstream social platforms. Yeah, let's let's back that up a little bit because our audience isn't going to have the uh, same kind of exposure to people in the social media space like uh, you do, like we do because of you. Um, and it, give them a little 101 on what we mean by blockchain social media. Ooh, okay. <laughs> this, this is a tough one, Adam. You're putting me on the spot. I, I do every um, time we do this. I know, I and know. I, and I'm going to do it uh, in person next month. Yes, right, yes. Girl. Buckle up. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm excited. <laughs> um, okay, so blockchain, I, I guess, I mean, this is like very bare bone basics as to what blockchain is. So basically what blockchain does is it may it when something gets posted, let's just say you're posting on I'm going to go with Rebuzz because that's what Jen has. So we're going we're going to post on Rebuzz. So whenever I upload a photo with my caption to Rebuzz, it gets sent out to everybody who is within that blockchain community. So let's say there's 100,000 people in that community. So then there are so many computers that are verifying that this is real. So let's say 10 computers need to verify that. So what they do is they these computers get sent a very difficult equation that they have to solve. So the computers are running, you know, all these different scenarios to confirm this equation and the first 10 to solve it. And they are basically verifying that this is a real post by they're verifying everything. So it's like when you go to the bank, they verify by, you know, checking your ID. And what the computers are doing is basically checking your ID. So then once all of those computers have said, yes, this is correct, everything matches, then it gets posted to the blockchain. And the way that I like to describe the blockchain is by using something very, very simple, and that is Legos. So when something gets posted to the blockchain, think about when you're building just basic Legos, Every time those 10 computers say, yes, this is correct, then another Lego gets added to that wall that you're building of the blockchain. Does that help? I think so. Um, okay. I'm, I'm not it's seeing... a very complex <laughs> subject to try and break down for people. It is, no question. It, it is complex. And I don't, those of you watching or listening, I don't think you necessarily need to understand the blockchain principle as much as you need to understand what opportunities it's going to provide, what it's going to mean for your business, what it's going to mean for automation, what it's going to mean for systemization, uh, certainly for censorship and privacy. These are big key factors in what's going to go on in blockchain activity. 
already does go on in blockchain activity. And certainly when we start talking about social media yep. in the blockchain space. So yeah, I, I do want I do want our audience to have a general understanding of what that means because it's just a term getting thrown around right now for the majority of the population. We have no concept of what that really means. Um, but I do want those of you watching and listening to at least open your eyes and ears to it, get a little education on it, really start to gather what it's going to mean for activities you can participate in. And when I don't, I don't mean you're going to go out to the park and, you know, play a pickup basketball game. I mean, activities like your social media posting, your uh, campaign work, um, whether that's, you know, birthdays or the anniversaries of when people bought homes or holidays, whatever the case may be. So I really just want our audience to be able to connect A to B, the A being what blockchain is and the B being what's actually important to them about blockchain. And even if that's just a, you know, thin thread that connects that A to B for them, I think that that's a fairly solid explanation from a, you know, a layman's position so that they can, you know, get a handle on what the B has to look like. Well, and so something I want to add to that is that businesses really need to consider when it comes to blockchain is especially if you are handling or managing a lot of personal customer information blockchain helps protect that so i mean we know every day it seems like we get notification that somebody else's data has been breached right and all your your social security numbers out there your passwords are out there or whatever it is and blockchain helps you or helps companies protect that information so also a very big deal for the majority of our audience no question right yeah so jen you were about to cool. say something no um i was gonna say i do want to make sure because i know this is going to go fast i do want to make sure we do talk about instagram um yeah. and the changes going on there because most of our audience is or should be on instagram and they might just be starting to think about blockchain like we are um so i would love to talk about instagram a little bit with erin while we have her and especially instagram's new release that neither of us have played with too much quite yet Aaron, are, what are you, are you speaking about Instagram? And uh, Jen, maybe this is the appropriate time to uh, talk about the Mastermind event where Aaron will be one of the live presenters for a live event, which is going to be a very strange event. Uh, for those of you that already have tickets, uh, do be prepared for a strange event. The uh, rules here in Colorado do require uh, some significant social distancing. So each and every uh, ticket holder participating in the event will have their own six foot table to sit at because yeah it's going to be an enormous room with a limited number of people so it'll feel a little strange but is this what yeah. you and Aaron have decided to uh, have Aaron present about at the event? Yeah, so a lot of our uh, attendees last year really wanted somebody to dive deep into what they should be doing on Instagram or what they could be doing better. So I'm really excited Aaron's going to be speaking about Instagram. Um, the event is September 18th and 19th. I'll just plug that real quick. There are very, very few tickets left. Um, you can text TIPS to 63566 to get that info. All right. Cool. And yeah, Aaron, give us some uh, insight. What are you going to talk about? This is cool. This is really cool. Well, first off, I just want to say that I'm super excited that the event is actually going to be in person. It will only be my second in-person event this year. So, all right. Well, let's let's for you and yeah. for Jen and for the audience, let's manage those expectations. <laughs> we just sent all the kids back to school, um, so we'll yeah. see a good spike here. I'm still giving it fifty-fifty odds that we're able to do it before the governor shuts everything down again. Right. Well, let's let's hope. Let's we hope. All right. For those of you watching and those of you attending, please stay away from other people. Wash your hands, wear a mask and hope everybody else is, too. All right. Go ahead, Aaron. All right. So I know Jen and I were talking about before we before we started the live stream uh, reels. And I know Jen is on TikTok. I am a stalker on TikTok and I I go watch Jen stuff. <laughs> and I watch other people's stuff. I am not a bit. I well, I've actually only done like two posts on that. Um, I, I think I'm about the same. I think I've done two, and Jen's done like eight for me. 
<laughs> nice. Um, so for those of you that don't know, Reels came out. How? When did it come out? Like a month or so ago? I'd say about a month. Uh, yeah. I was going to say like three weeks. Yeah, yeah. That hasn't been very long. So they've been talking about it. So, you know, basically what it is, is it's short form video. Um, what? I think it's like three to 15 seconds long. It's similar to TikTok from what I've heard is the hardcore TikTok users don't really care for Reels. Um, a lot of the functionality is missing from Reels. Um, I think there's some pretty big gaps as far as like what the TikTok users want in Reels. Um, what have you been hearing, Jen? The biggest downfall um, that we talked about a, a little bit before the show is the amazing part of TikTok is anyone can quote unquote go viral. You have no idea. Like I posted a video of this patio cat that I rescued that's sleeping on my bed right now um, that has like 60 likes and only like 180 views. So that's a really good you know, rates. Um, and on Instagram with reels, they're only really promoting the profiles that already have a huge following. So if you don't already have a huge Instagram following, nobody's going to see your reels. And it's a lot more work than an Instagram post. I mean, it's typical TikTok video. We did one in the office with a coaching client and it took us almost the whole hour coaching session to put together one TikTok. It's a lot of work to put on Instagram and have Nobody less people see it. See it. Yeah. Right. So that's well, the biggest downfall I've seen. I mean, the thing is, is that it's it's easy enough, right, to do your TikTok, which seems to be easier to use, download it, and then share it on Instagram. Put it on Instagram, so, exactly. <laughs> why? Yeah, like, you're not going to do it twice. Right. And I, I'm certainly not the social media expert that Aaron is, and certainly even that Jen is. I know enough to know that bread dough will get you banned on Facebook for 30 days. True. Um, mm -hmm. But it seems to me that Instagram is just kind of a hodgepodge of ideas stolen from basically every other social media platform. The ones from Facebook, I get, Insta is owned by Facebook. Um, but Reels seems to be just a poor facsimile of TikTok. Um, IGTV seems to be a bad facsimile of, you know, YouTube or YouTube Live. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that there's certainly an issue there. But I think one of the biggest things, and I can't identify it yet, is that Instagram's algorithm is leaning towards the dollars. You know, the people who are doing Instagram, paid sponsors. Hey, I'm Who Man with Bang Energy, and I don't want to, or this video is sponsored by Bang, and I don't want to badmouth Who Man. I love his stuff. It's hilarious. Um, and TikTok just seems more organic to me. Like Jen's, Jen's Patio Cat, and I'm not even sure the Patio Cat has a real name, but Patio <laughs> Cat is going to potentially be viral and he'd never have a chance on Insta. Right. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I think that especially, I mean, Gen Z is king of TikTok still. I mean, uh, millennials started to take over during the quarantine because we were bored and all we were doing was drinking at home. So that's how I ended up making TikToks. But Gen Z is still king. And what they love is how authentic it is. I mean, there are some politics there, but it's nothing like Facebook. It's not the ugly debates. It's people showing off cool stuff that they know how to do. Um, yeah. But that being said, Reels is probably here to stay. I'm sure that it's only going to get better with time and more than likely it's going to end up helping you with the Instagram algorithm. So neither Aaron or I have played with it much, but probably in time we'll be forced to. Aaron, um, Aaron and I are both like, mm, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I'll figure your, it out, guys. It's going to help with your Insta <laughs> algorithm, unfortunately, yes. Yeah. yeah you're yeah. going to have to yeah. do it. Well, yeah. and YouTube is also talking about coming out with their sort of a uh, short video platform of some sort too so i haven't seen much about when that's going to come out but these you know these social media giants know that tiktok is huge competition so it'll be interesting to see. well and i mean speaking of tick tiktok i mean what do we think is going to happen i mean when what was the deadline for the I, it, I think it was like the middle of september i think so yep so yeah, who knows what's going to happen at TikTok if okay. somebody buys yeah, them out. It's hard to say. And there was, I was uh, watching CNBC behind me this morning, as is usual for somebody in the mortgage space in a financial <laughs> sector. Um, and there was still chatter about it. I mean, every day right now, what yeah. is the future of TikTok? 
Who knows? <laughs> Well, this is going to be exciting. I, I'm ecstatic to hear what Aaron's going to say at the Mastermind event next Well, week. yeah, so um, I haven't even started planning for the Mastermind yet. Um, I guess Jenna and I should talk about what she, what she wants me to focus well, on. Don't feel bad because uh, we planned the whole thing to the letter. And then we had a pandemic, and we've had to replan the whole thing. So, right. Yeah, yeah. we would have had to hit the reset button recently anyway. Exactly. Um, but so I did want to talk about today. I had some tips for everybody for their Instagram profiles. Cool. Awesome. Um, so a couple things that I wanted to discuss was first thing, just like looking at Instagram, like your profile from top to bottom. So the first thing you want to look at is your profile image. And typically I always recommend that you have a really clear headshot for that profile image um sometimes i mean you can argue that you could use your logo um i i personally like to have a headshot because people connect with people people don't connect with a logo a logo means nothing to most people unless you're like coca-cola or you know nike or you're a really big brand that gets recognized by your your logo that's been around for a hundred you know. years Exactly. Yeah, I, agree. Um, I, I won't even uh, participate with somebody on social media unless their picture, I don't care what platform, unless their picture is them. A logo, right. your yeah. cat, some flowers, <laughs> unacceptable. My favorite is when it's on Twitter and it's the egg. And you're like, it's... <laughs> right? You can't even bother to upload a picture. No, uh, a single you. picture. And Jen and I pretty much coach everybody through having that same picture yep. across all social media profiles to help with that branding. So that no matter what platform somebody is seeing you on, they might recognize that picture from your website or from Facebook yep. or from Insta or whatever the case may be. So, yeah, absolutely solid idea there. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so then I actually need to open up an Insta just to make sure I'm going from top to bottom. So the next is like there's a difference between your username and your uh, profile name. So your username, I mean, your username should definitely tell somebody what or why to follow you. Um, give them, I mean, it, depending on what you're talking about. So like for me, my company is socially powered and my my username is socially powered. Um, but then hold on, I'm pulling it up because I'm like, what do I have mine? Mine, my profile name says Aaron Cell Social Strategist. So that way if you meet me, you know, like you tie together my company name is socially powered, but you you know me as Aaron Cell, and what do I do? I do social strategy, right? So it ties everything together um the next thing is your bio and i can't i don't know how many characters you have in there but i know it's it's short it's um i don't know 280 maybe something, something like, like that. yeah yeah um i, I think that's so the you, current tweeter tweet oh yeah that limit, is right so, yeah i'm not sure what it is offhand um for Instagram, for your bio, but you only have so much space there. So you want to make sure that you're taking advantage of telling people that would potentially follow you what it is that you do and why they should follow you. So is it it's like for me, it's helping power up your business online. I'm a speaker. I provide social media tips, tools, networking, branding, and then also blockchain. And then the last thing you want to do is tell them how to connect with you. And so for me, I have, I set up a special page on my website. So it's sociallypowered.com forward slash Instagram links. So this provides you with all the links that I'm sharing on Instagram. So you go to one page and you can get whatever it is that you need from me. Um, a lot of people would also do like there's um, link tree. So it's, um, linktr.ee -E, or there's another one um i'm totally blanking yeah, I am on too we're using linktree or i am i should say but okay. i can't remember yeah. what the other one is either yeah i know there's another one and i'm i'm blanking on what it is right now i don't remember what it's called but anyway so basically what that is is that is a shortener so you can go put in your 
your website, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Twitter, your what, wherever it is that you want to redirect people from Instagram to connect with you. Um, it could be like your latest blog. So then you put your, you know, you put an image of your blog in the, in your feed and then say link in, in profile. And then you just have to update that link tree to your latest blog, but you still have those, all those other ways to connect. Um, yeah, it looks like the, thing- the, the bigger alternatives are many link, uh, link or in linkle. Um, there oh, are a wow. handful out there, though. It looks like they're. Uh, I have not even heard of some of those. Uh, so. Campsite. Campsite. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously go Google or. Yeah. Um, go go Google people. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So then the other thing that I would say in your description is to use hashtags. You can also use hashtags in your. Um, bio name description, like where I had Aaron sell social strategist, I could actually put a hashtag in there. I don't have one now, but um, you'll see in my bio, I've got hashtag social media. I've got hashtag blockchain. Um, the other thing that I recommend is emojis. Uh, people can search by emojis, but it also just spices up your Instagram, like how it looks, right? Um, I think just having a regular description spelled out with no emojis is boring. And, you know, Instagram really likes emojis and hashtags. So they do now. They've been on a, you know, do we or do we not like hashtags roller coaster in their existence? Well, I think it depends on the hashtag, right? right? Yeah. (laughs) Well, certainly that. But I think that that's a really important tip in case you guys aren't really focused listening. You can search on emojis. That's huge. You can search on emojis and you can search on hashtags. And you can search on hashtags with emojis. That's so, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so then, I mean, beyond that, I would say for your feed is, I mean, I would just be consistent. And when I say consistent, I always tell people like to do whatever it is that you can, you can do that. You don't have to post three times a day. And sometimes if you're posting three times a day, that may be too much for your audience. They may be like, Oh my God, they, what, what is going on? Why are they posting so much? And if you post too much, then you may see that your follower account goes down because you're overwhelming your audience. You're so, boring your audience. Right. Your well, and that isn't it, interesting it, to them in that kind of volume. If you're if you're posting good quality content that people care about, if you're posting three times a day, it might be fine. But if you're just posting three times a day to post three times a day and you're not giving people something that they care about, then stop. And, you know, in fact, um, one of my friends, I don't know if you guys know her, but Jen Herman is Instagram expert and she's only been posting like a few times a month. Because she's like, I would rather give really good quality content than try and post every day. So, and it it works for her. Yeah, um, it's, well, it it is a tough balance. Um, And I'm constantly reminded of something that Gary V said about putting, and who am I to question what Gary knows and doesn't know about (laughs) building a social media platform or a social media audience following. 40. He said you put you should be posting 40 pieces of content across all platforms a day. Yeah. Now that, you know, is absolute lunacy to me. And mostly because I don't live, work, operate in a space where my audience is going to want to see that garbage 40 times a day. A dozen across all platforms, two dozen maybe even across all platforms, but depending on where, now Gary V sold wine back then, right? And do I wanna see wine? Do I wanna see Jen's wine, for example, 40 times a day? Sure, there's absolutely no reason that that's gonna bore me as long as the content is original. But if we're gonna talk about mortgages, and a lot of our audience would, or real estate, and a lot of our audience would, now we're starting to get to a point where it's a couple of boring subjects. What's more boring than mortgages and real estate? Tax law, maybe, <laughs> right? Yes. Um, yeah. So nobody's going to watch or pay attention to 40 posts a day across all platforms about tax law. So you guys have got to find a comfortable balance to where you are giving your audience good content and always audience first. What do they want to see, hear, read, watch? 
and losing your audience because you're putting so much content out there that you're now boring them. So, yeah, take that with a grain of salt. Um, and for those of you that are going to be able to attend the Mastermind event, Aaron's Brain will be a great one to pick for what kind of content, where to find that balance, what platforms. Um, I mean, you guys, we are talking about the... Uh, you know, organizer of social media day here. So uh, take advantage. Uh, we, don't, we don't get Darren in person all that often. <laughs> uh, so I just want to add to that. One of the things I also recommend is, I mean, we're talking about Instagram, but really you need to figure out where it is the people that you're trying to reach are online. So you don't need to be all things on all platforms. Pick the platform where the people are and also the platform that you like because you can, I mean, for example, I'm not a huge fan of Twitter. I'm on there. I mean, I'm on there, A, because I have to be because it's part of what I do um, and because it's, you know, a great source of news, kind of. Kind of. Uh, well, we were but, on there to find out that the majority of the country has Zoom again this morning. Right. That's valuable yes. news. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a great place to go to find out what other social media platforms are down. Uh, That's what I use it for. Yeah. <laughs> right. Why isn't uh, Facebook working Twitter? Thank you. Yep, exactly. Um, I love it when Facebook is down and you go to Twitter and that's all you see. Uh, but basically, I mean, think about what it is, where it is that you like to be. And if the people that you're trying to reach are, because if you're trying to be on a platform that you don't like, being on it makes it really challenging to want to post and engage there well and your audience your ideal audience doesn't want to post and engage there right but again right. this still comes back to audience first and not just yep. what do they want to see here read watch but where are they when are they and that stuff's difficult right now because we're all glued to our screens we're staying at home we're on every platform we're on 24 hours a day whatever the case may be so it is difficult right now to really hone down when and where your audience your ideal target audience is but you've still got to spend that time doing it absolutely how are we doing on time, Jen? We probably already ran over. We're, right? over. we're over. Yeah, we're yeah. over. <laughs> That's typical when we get talking with Aaron. All right. So, Aaron, some really great tips in there, no question. Um, and I suspect we're going to get a, a plethora more of them from you in person. I'm so stoked to see people again. <laughs> I sure do miss people. Me people, too. Were, people were cool. So we're places. I get things. to wear a dress. Like Whoa. I haven't worn a dress. In... <laughs> right. I get to dress like, up. Real clothes. Yeah. yeah. I still don't think I'm going to go that far. <laughs> well, let's hope you wear pants at least. Uh, we do, do require pants in our office. You have a dress okay. code at the office. Yep, you That's have good. to be dressed. That's true. That's, uh, no PJs. Um, oh, you can wear PJs. Okay. Okay. You can do PJs. Um, all right. So uh, one last time, I promise, before we bore our audience with this, next month, September 18 and 19 at the Higher Regency Denver Tech Center, there will be the Mile High Mastermind. Two days, 10 speakers, focused a lot on lead generation, branding, um, how to get in front of audiences. We're going to have Felicia Jones speak. You introduced us to her years ago. Then Jen yeah, and I went and saw her. Oh, she's amazing. Uh, yeah. Then we went and saw her speak at PodFest uh, right before the world fell apart early this year. Uh, yeah. She was on the show here recently within the last yeah, couple of months. Yeah, I saw that. Um, yep. And she is going to be speaking at the Mastermind. So if you guys want to pick up one of the few remaining tickets left due to social distancing and the uh, pandemic guidelines, you can use our text code. Text tips two six three five six six. It'll ping you back that information, as well as how to get uh, previous episodes of How I Met Your Mortgage, how to get our uh, weekly video blog, the weekly little tip, uh, a copy of how to get a copy of my book, just the tips. Oh, the green screen's doing fun things there. <laughs> All right. So if my, beach, if my book were written on a beach, it was not. It was written at a desk. I promise you. Um, so, yeah, feel free to use that. And, yeah, Aaron, anything else you could give our audience some insight into as to why they should come see you live? We'd love to hear it. Well, I mean, obviously I'll be providing all kinds of great 
information, tools, insights into social. Um, but I also always do some sort of giveaway. Um, most likely it will be an Instagram planning guide since that's what I'm talking about. Um, uh, but I've been working on some other, you know, tools and, and giveaways. So who knows, maybe I'll throw something else in there. Oh, I like that cool. a lot. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. And how about you, Jen? Anything you think our audience should know about this, about Aaron, about the mastermind event before we sign off for the week? I mean, the content this year is unreal. We have some, we have 10 awesome speakers. So, and I think we have like a handful of tickets left. So definitely grab those ASAP if you want to join us. Yeah. And this is the uh, fourth year that we've done it. Um, yep. And it does uh, improve uh, quite a bit every year, no question. And I've got to be really honest with uh, both of you and everybody listening or watching, whether it's live or in syndication, I'm really stoked to be somewhere that's not home or office and see people that <laughs> yep. aren't normally in my home or office i mean you know we'll be doing uh six foot distant hugs and that kind of thing but man i am stoked to see people and uh yeah we got people coming in from all over uh seattle washington miami florida and uh all corners of this country of ours so um nice. yeah it'll be a cool event as long as i don't have to wear a mask while i'm speaking Oh, that's a good question. You know, the no. hotel never asked. Uh, they, uh, Jen and I have unfortunately canceled a couple of engagements. One we would just have gotten back from. Uh, we were going to speak at the uh, Originator Connect event in Las Vegas on two separate occasions, uh, a private event the day before and then the opening morning. And they were requiring masks for speakers who could not stay at the podium. So if you could stand still at the podium, and I gather by what they're telling us that that was going to be behind a big piece of uh, plexiglass, okay. then there was no mask requirement. If you are the kind of speaker, and I'm guilty of wanting to wander around the stage while you're talking, um, then you did have to wear a mask. But yeah, the uh, facility... I think if, if, it, if the choice was stay behind the podium and not wear a mask, I would choose that and right. try to keep myself... because. Part of speaking is the facial expression, Absolutely. and if the this is hidden, I just Absolutely. I don't feel like it. You get the same impact. Yeah, I would agree. Well, hopefully, no. we'll no. Uh, figure that out for our speakers. Add that um, to the list of questions. Yeah, we have a lot of them. <laughs> right, uh, right. New yeah. world here. Yep. All right. Well, thank you for joining us again, yes. Aaron. I can't believe it's been eight months, and I'm sure we'll do it again. <laughs> And thank you guys will, for having me back. Yeah, and we'll get to see you in a few weeks. This will be great. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Very cool. All right, I'm going to run our extra. Thank you all for watching, listening, um, whether it's uh, the live video or the podcast. We appreciate it. Tune in next week, and you guys have a great week. <laughs>